Yep. Today I'm here to talk about uh, doing some CI/CD with. Uh, where's my mouse go? Uh, sorry, one second. There we go. Um, here to talk about CI/CD with. Phoenix, GitHub Actions, and GigaLixer. Uh, CICD is continuous integration and continuous deployment. So, uh, nothing's working here. There we go. So a little bit about me, uh, you've already kind of heard it. Uh, my name's Mitch. I currently work at Bleach Report. I used to work at SCP in town. It's a picture of me uh, with my cat. Um, so, my usual routine for when I'm starting a new project um, is go something like this. I uh, host my code on GitHub. I'll copy my circle CI config uh, from my last project, usually an Elixir project, just copy, put it, paste it, put it in there. Um, I'll deploy it on Heroku, and then I'll configure Heroku to deploy from GitHub automatically if the GitHub checks pass, which CircleCI will be a GitHub check. Um, I normally do this just because I like to, whenever I do a side project, I just like to immediately uh, shoot it to the cloud, um, get all that taken care of, and then when I actually want to use it, I can just uh, git push and then, then it will be there. Kind of helps make your uh, side projects kind of feel real um, to actually deploy them and not just have them running on your, on your local computer. Um, so that's what I normally do, but uh, with, you, with each passing day, um, we get new new technology to try. So there are a few new players on the scene. Um, as of the last year, there's GitHub Actions. And as of the last couple years, there's um, GigaLixer, which is another PaaS, P-A-A-S, platform as a service. Um, this one targeting um, Elixir specifically. It can, it can run other stuff too, but um, as, as you can see on the screen here, um, it claims to be the only platform that fully supports Elixir and doesn't have any drawbacks um, that, we'll, that Roku gives you that we'll kind of talk about later. Um, so what are, what are GitHub Actions? Well, GitHub Actions is a, it's a new product from GitHub and it gives you the ability to sort of run arbitrary workflows and CI pipelines in response to events emitted by GitHub, such as you push code, a pull request is opened, an issue is open, what and whatnot. Um, and these workflows can be composed by using different actions. It's kind of like the, the composable unit. Um, and these actions can be written in JavaScript, TypeScript. Uh, you can use Bash, and then you can also make Docker-based actions. Um, Gig Elixir, like I said, past design specifically uh, for Elixir. It doesn't impose the same uh, limits as Heroku, but it uses Git deployments just like Heroku. So you just push to, like you would say, Git push Heroku master to the Heroku origin. You just Git push Gigalixer master and it'll deploy your code for you. So uh, to kind of demonstrate this, let's walk through setting up a new Phoenix application and see what it takes to set up some CI CD with uh, GitHub Actions, and let's, let's push it on to Gig Elixir. So we're going to create an application called Pipsqueak. It's sort of like my uh, playground for this this series of like blogs and and talks I'm I'm wanting to give. Um, Pipsqueak will eventually be a URL shortener. Um, so Pipsqueak is tiny. Um, so to create a new new Phoenix project, you like you probably already have the the Phoenix new um, installer installed, so we say mix Phoenix new pipsqueak, and let's go go into the, the directory. And then what I like to do is just immediately uh, cut a commit and get that pushed. Just so sometimes I run into this thing where I new up the the repo, and then I make like a little bit of changes, and then I say, oh, I just want to I just want to cut a commit, and then that first commit is mixed with like my changes and the like generator. And I, I don't really like to mix those. So then here I use the, which is actually now this is this is becoming deprecated, but the GitHub CLI, a hub create, we'll just create a repo and uh, on your account. And then let's go ahead and push it up there. 
So when we want to set up our uh, GitHub workflow, use GitHub Actions, um, these workflows, they live in the .github slash workflows directory. You can have many workflows per repo. Um, the, a workflow is a YAML file in that directory. So you can have ci.yaml, you can have linting.yaml, deploy.yaml, just whatever you want. Um, these workflows are, the syntax for this is very similar to the circle CI config, so it might seem uh, um, familiar. But the workflows are composed of jobs, and then jobs are composed of steps. And then these steps can either be GitHub actions that you've written or that the community has written or just arbitrary shell commands. And then these workflows, you can start up uh, services like Postgres or Kafka or Redis or whatever you want. So I, I like to use the term verify for um, my does CI work or not command. So uh, creating, creating a workflow is called verify.yaml. Um, let's walk through sort of the syntax we're seeing here. So um, here at this base, you'll see it, the key, the key on, and that's saying what GitHub events do you want your action to respond to? So here we can say on push. So it's going to be on any push, doesn't matter what branch um, this, this action will be run. So then as we go through here, we define um, a list of jobs. So our first one is going to be called verify. So it's technically two different things. The file is called verify and the first job is called verify there. They're mutually exclusive. They can be named different things. Um, so then each job um, runs in a certain environment. There's uh, what GitHub Actions calls virtual environments, which can be, um, you can have Ubuntu, Windows, and Mac environments. And you can sort of think of these as just like a virtual machine. I think they might be Docker containers in the background, but you don't really have to worry about that. And then these come preloaded with a bunch of uh, dev tools that you might expect. Um, they're sort of slow to roll out um, and have really everything you need, but they have like curl, JQ, like a bunch of good CLI command uh, tools, and then also has like Chrome driver and Google Chrome and Firefox and all that kind of stuff pre-installed. Um, so then that tells you what container or environment it's gonna run on. And then the next thing you see here is the strategy with this matrix key. Um, for, this is very useful if you're running a open source project and you need your, your library to be tested on, this is what Travis CI is, is really uh, known for, I feel like. Um, you wanna run it on like a, every combination of um, like Elixir version, like with Elixir, you have OTP and Elixir versions, so it gets a little bit hairier, but like if it's like a Ruby library, you want to run it on the last six versions of Ruby. Um, so, but for your own like product, you really just want to run it on the version that you actually use. Um, but in this case, we're going to use this matrix just so that we can um, reference these values through a variable later in the action and not have to like hard code. So whenever we up the version, we change it one place. Um, so these are the services that I've talked about. So this is a, a basic Phoenix app. So we're going to want a database. Um, these services are um, they use Docker containers. So this uses the Postgres version 12 image, pass it some environment variables to, to tell it how to boot up. Um, here you can expose the ports. Um, so inside the container, it'll use port 5432, and then it'll expose port 5432 outside of it so your app can talk to it. Um, and then we can pass some of these options just to make sure that the database is able to um, come up and be healthy by the time our app starts. Um, so then let's set up our languages. So here's when our list of steps are starting. So our first, um, this first line uses action slash checkout at V2. This is a syntax for using a GitHub action. And this is like repo, or this is like organizations or user slash repo. And then you say at, and then you can either say like at master, or you can give it a tag. Um, this actions organization is um, the official like GitHub actions. And they have a bunch of official, official actions you can use. 
So use this checkout one to check out your code through Git into the, the GitHub Actions container. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to set up Elixir. Um, so then here you can see this with key and this, these are sort of the inputs into the action. So here we're going to pass it what OTP version we want to use and what Elixir version we want to use. So here you can see this handlebars type um, syntax here with the curly braces and the money sign. Um, this is where you can sort of interpolate an expression. And in the docs, you can see there's a bunch of um, different, like a uh, different context that are available here. And one of them is the matrix context. So we had passed, let's see if I can go back. Yeah, so here in this matrix, we had passed OTP and Elixir. So then here we can say matrix.otp and matrix.elixir. Um, and that will, that will install those and get it all set up. Um, we also need nodes. So we do sort of the same thing with the setup node action. Um, so our next step is um, we kind of just want to cache everything because you don't want to install your dependencies every time. And in the case of Elixir, it's compiled. You don't necessarily want to recompile everything. Like it shouldn't take that long, but it might. And then if you use Dialyzer, if you cache your build, it'll also really, really heavily speed that up. So we'll break down, we'll break this down a little bit here. Um, use the cache action. You give it an ID and then it takes two inputs. One is the path. So depths is the is the directory that Elixir uses that Mix uses to install your dependencies. And then you're going to give it a key. And then you can see this big, long, tangled up, up thing right here. Um, so this this is the key that to enable to bust your cache. Like the you want there to be variables in here that will change. When they change, you want your cache to be busted. So in here, if you change the OS, you want it to be busted. Um, and then also here, if you install a new dependency, um, your mix.lock file will, cha will change. So here you can use this hash files function, which is provided by GitHub Actions in the, in the, um, the environment. Um, you can use th that and you hash that and it'll all be part of this big long uh, key. And if any of that changes, um, it'll bust your cache and um, it'll re reinstall the dependencies. This next one is where we're, we're caching the build. So Elixir is smart enough that it'll only recompile which files they have changed. So um, we can cache this whole build and then pull it back. And then when it compiles, it'll only compile what it needs. Um, but in this case, you might want to recompile the whole thing if your Elixir or OTP versions have changed. So here we've also added those into the, into the key. So if either of those change, it'll bust the cache and then it'll, it'll re recompile the whole thing. Or it won't, it won't restore the uh, build directory and then it'll recompile everything. Um, then we sort of do the same thing uh, with yarn, our yarn dependencies. Um, so we kind of need to know where our, the yarn cache directory is. So here we create a, a variable called yarn cache and then uses this special syntax with the double columns. I don't fully understand it. This was sort of ripped from somewhere else, but that's, that's sort of the, um, the gist of what's that doing, what that's doing. So after that, this is this is the last bit of our of our CI, our continuous integrations that um, we want to install our depths. So mix mix depths get and then CD into assets and we'll run yarn. And then I like running the formatter and running my tests. So run those two things and if either of them fail, it will um, if any of them end with exit code greater than zero, your your action will fail and it'll say um, your, your CI failed and it'll alert you. Um, this run key is, is um, how you just run arbitrary um, commands. So in this case, we're running the Ubuntu container, so it's gonna run in bash. Um, if you were running in a Mac container, I'm assuming it would be bash or Z shell. And then if you're in a Windows computer, I'm assuming it's going to run in it might run in PowerShell, but you might also be able to configure whether it's uh, a command prompt or, or PowerShell. Um, and you can also give it a name to show up in the log. These last two, you didn't give it a name. So we talked about the GitHub Actions, and now we're going to move on to Gig Elixir, but let's, let's kind of talk about like why we even care about Gig Elixir. So normally, 
I deploy my side projects to Heroku, but like I said, Heroku has some some drawbacks when deploying Elixir applications. Um, so th these these uh, bullet points are just in in the Phoenix guides. There are um, there is a there is a guide for deploying to Heroku, and these are just straight copy pasted from from that guide. So the way Heroku is all the way it's built is that it just makes some some things kind of hard. Your connections are limited. Uh, if you're using Phoenix, you might have a lot of long-lived um, WebSocket connections. So those are limited. So you're going to run uh, hit a ceiling on there. Um, the way that the, the Heroku dynos are um, sequestered stops you from being able to do this distributed clustering that uh, Beam and Erlang Elixir applications are sort of powerful when you want to have a cluster. Um, as we all know, Heroku dynos, the server in Heroku, um, those restart every 24 hours. So um, these long-lived uh, in-memory state that you can use gen servers or ads or agents for, those are just going to be lost. So you can't you can't um, have guarantees that those are going to be there. And then there are other things like the built-in observer can't be used with Heroku. I think that has to do with um, similar to the clustering, like the the TCP sockets are not aren't up there to be able to be used. So um, some people saw this, they didn't like it, and built something new. So um, there's this this new platform, Gig Elixir, deploys just as easily as Heroku, and it makes it easy to, if you want to adopt the new Elixir 1.9 releases, you can also easily deploy those. So we're going to go ahead and see what it looks like to deploy your application to Gig Elixir. And then after that, we'll do the continuous deployment aspect with GitHub Actions and, and get it there. So if you want to config, if you want to deploy your, uh, your app on Gig Elixir using the Elixir releases, it will automatically look for this config slash releases file. Um, and if it sees that file, it's assuming you're, it's assuming you're going to use Elixir releases. So go and create that file. And then this is your runtime config for, for using Elixir releases. So here we're going to set the port and then we're also going to set the host, which is going to be our app name um, concatenated with uh, .gigelixerapp.com. Um, and that's used for when the URL helpers are um, creating URLs. Um, Gigalixer is, is highly inspired by Heroku, so they took advantage of a lot of the Heroku build packs. So if you want to um, configure things like the Elixir Erlang node and yarn version, you can use the Elixir, like the vanilla, well, vanilla, I mean, it's not modified for Gigalixer at all. You can just use the Elixir build pack. Um, so you can create an Elixir build pack config file, set these two, these two variables, and then um, same thing with the Phoenix static build pack. I didn't expect that I would have to set the yarn version, but as you can see, the current version is 1.22, so that's what I set it at. But the version that is just on Gig Elixir by default is like 0.3, so it's kind of really far behind, so I had, had to go ahead and set this. Um, so once that, well, that's all configured, you're gonna to wanna to install the Gig Elixir CLI. It's all CLI based. Um, Heroku um, also has a very good CLI, but they also have the, the web UI to sort of back that up. You can do things in kind of both places. Whereas Gig Elixir, I think because it was originally started by one, one guy, Jesse something, I can't remember his last name. Um, uh, it's pretty much you can have to do everything other than like creating the app through the CLI. So uh, you just install it through uh, PIP, which is the Python pack ma package manager. And then you we'll, can create our app, just called Gig Elixir Create. It'll look in, I can't remember, I probably should have written this down. Uh, it might prompt you for the name of the app or it might just use the repo name, but um, you'll run that. It'll you know, shoot off API requests and um, create, your, create your app in the cloud. We also need a database. So we're using this PG create command and we're gonna create the free tier. Um, and once that's all complete, we can go ahead and get push. It'll set up a remote, a GigaLixer remote and we can push our code to Gig Elixir here. And you'll get a, just like Heroku, you'll get a um, big uh, build log as it's, as it's uh, compiling and deploying. And then, at, and then it'll do some like health checks after it's all done. 
and after it actually does take it's not like very quickly it might be like a few minutes it'll um, configure all the load balancers and then it'll just be available so then you should be able to go to um, here we have pipsqueak.googleixerapp.com and here we have our complete almost completely vanilla Phoenix app I did add this um, there is a Gigalix are automatically uh, exports an environment variable called source version, which is the, the hash, the head hash of the deployed code. So just to confirm my code is actually deploying, I put that in there to see uh, what version of the app is running. So here you can see uh, 3D FC blah, blah, as the deployed version. So we got it there, Git push is great. Uh, very, very easy in the beginning, um, I think, Heroku also kind of seems like, oh, it's so easy, just get push, but you don't really want to always do that. Like, it's very easy for like literally the first deploy. And then after that, it's, in my opinion, kind of obnoxious, especially if you're going to uh, be deploying anything real. If you're going to deploy anything real, you're probably going to have a build system do the deploy. So um, Heroku is nice and that it has a specific GitHub like checkbox, like automatically deploy this branch when the checks pass, you just click it. Gigalixer doesn't have that. Um, but luckily, we can um, use GitHub Actions to deploy our code for us. Um, I originally looked to see if there was anything out there. There wasn't. So then you can actually create actions in your, um, your own uh, repository. So your, your workflows live at .github slash workflows. But then you can write actions at .github slash action slash and then your action so if you want to sort of uh, create an action without having to deploy it or like push it somewhere else you can so that's why i originally built this i just had it all in the same repo and i decided to do the git push over and over and over again ci config sort of deal um but so now i ended up writing my own action and we're going to kind of take a look at it here so it's called gigalixer action um, it deploys your application to Gigalixer. It'll run your migrations for you. That uh, used to not be optional. It used to be sort of like hard coded to assume you have migrations you want to run. And then, uh, but recently, uh, someone, I can't remember if I did or someone else contributed, but now, now it's optional. You don't have to run migrations if you don't have a database. Um, but if the migrations fail, it'll roll back your deployment to the latest version. So that's one of the automatic things that I love about build systems that I wouldn't want to do um, every time by myself, just through through the command line. It's very error prone. So to get this set up, um, the way we run the migrations on GigaLixer is um, there is a built-in command, but it requires um, sort of it hides it in, in the in the Giga Elixir CLI, but it essentially SSH there and then eval some Elixir code and it kind of has some generic code that should work with every, um, with most generic repos, but you can write your own uh, migration module if you need to, and you can run that. But, so we're gonna have to upload a private, a public key to Giga Elixir, a private key to our GitHub as a GitHub secret, and then, we're going to have to upload our Gigalixer username and password as a GitHub secret as well. This is a little sketchy. If you're actually doing this, you might want to create like another account and use that as like the GitHub Actions account rather than just using your actual password. <coughs> um, but so generate SSH key, do it kind of like normal whenever you're setting up a new computer. Uh, here we use the Gigalixer CLI to so use uh, account SSH keys add. Um, here we'll cat the the public key in there, and then here we'll PB copy is the Mac OS sort of uh, put in the pasteboard like the clipboard for you. Um, so we'll take the private key and we'll put it in our clipboard. So we'll go to our repo, and um, here you'll see the secrets uh, tab in the sidebar, and this is where you can add um, arbitrary encrypted secrets. Uh, you can't change these once they're there, so you just have to delete it and re-upload it. Um, so you, you just paste in your whole private key in there. So 
here for to do the deploy, um, we're going to create another job in the workflow. So here um, we call this new job deploy. And then a job all, can also take uh, this key called needs, and you can pass it the name of another job. Um, so it'll only run this job if verify succeeds. Um, you can also use this uh, key if, so only run this job if, and then uh, everywhere else you need to use those curly brace uh, sort of syntax, but in if, um, it automatically interprets it as an expression, so you don't need to do that. So GitHub is another one of those contexts you can um, refer to. So here we're going to say only run this if the ref of this workflow is the master branch. So rest heads master. That's that's sort of the um, what when you open a pull request. Uh, that's that's the actual um, like branch name that uh, it checks out is ref slash head slash master. So we're only going to run it if it's the master branch and if the verify um, task succeeded. Um, you can. It doesn't have to be master. You can, if you use dev as your main trunk or anything else, you can just got to change uh, whatever string you want to put in there. So then here, our first step, we got to check out the code. As of um, the checkout action at V2, it, to make it in most, in the usual circumstance, faster, it only checks out the latest commit. Or in our case, since we're going to later be push, like git push, um, gig elixir uh, we need we need the whole thing so here we can say ref master and if you pass fetch depth to zero it'll check out the whole commit history not just the last commit so we need that and then oh and so if you were going to deploy to dev or from dev or whatever you would also put put it in there um, so then here's when we're actually going to configure the gig elixir action so um, this takes uh, a few uh, four inputs: uh, your username, password, the app name, and the private key. Um, you can also put your app name as a secret, but uh, it might not matter. In my case, it didn't matter. So um, here we pass in those secrets, and it's uh, GitHub Actions are smart enough to know that when you like call into the secrets context to filter those in the log, so you don't have to worry about exposing that stuff. Um, oh, yep, so then uh, really that's it um, to get your code to deploy. All you got to do is then um, commit this and push this and it'll run and it'll deploy your code. Um, I wanted to, in my Chrome, here I have the actual action that we can look through. So like I said, um, the um, actions are these, I, mine is a JavaScript action. Um, so the way that you build it really is to so see this disk directory. Um, you actually like, this feels wrong, but it's sort of the way GitHub is the distribution mechanism. So you have to package your code and commit it there. So um, in here, you'll see the actual compiled JavaScript that, that is ugly. But um, we will take a look at how the how it actually um, does the deploying and everything. So um, your action will everything is really going to be an async function. So you're going to call await a lot. Um, run is the oh, that's fancy. Um, run is like the entry point. Um, so here we're going to throw this in a in a try, and uh, they provide this like seven different um, libraries that are made available in here, um, in this case core, to be able to do different things. So core is, is how you sort of get input. So these all, um, uh, these all correspond to those inputs that we pass in with the, with the width key. So now when we get all those, we call them all required. Um, and then, as we go through, it's really just going to do the same sort of thing we did locally, but it's we're just executing it here. Um, so we install Gig Elixir. Um, here you can sort of 
this is this core dot group is how you write logs, but then also make it so in the logs it has the collapsing triangle doodab. Um, so here we install Google Elixir. Next thing is we log in the Google Elixir. Here we set up the Git remote for our app. And then here we want to get the current release. So this is how we're going to know how to roll back if we need to. So how does this work? Nice. Um, so we have this other function. Um, get current release. You got to set up these listeners for standard out. Um, so then I can just call Gigalix or releases my app and um, it'll give you a bunch of JSON and that's how we'll, we'll determine the um, the current release. So we log that. Here we attempt to deploy. So then this syntax is a little bit different. It's not just git push Gigalix or master. Um, here we want to force because we just want whatever we have to go being deployed. We don't want to have sort of a mixture of the deployed code is all merge commits and whatnot. Um, so here it's going to say this colon syntax here is I want to deploy our head commit to refs heads master on Gigalixer. So that'll push what's currently checked out to Gigalixer master. Um, here the next is when we're going to run our migrations. So we had our private key to Gigalixer. Um, I couldn't really figure out how best to run it with this exec um, stuff. So I ended up just making a shell script. So it's kind of nice that you can just make ar arbitrary shell scripts and still run those. So here, make the SSH directory, um, set up the SSH config, put it all in there, change the permissions. Just run that script. Um, then here, now we're going to wait for the new release to deploy. So like I was saying, it actually takes a little bit for it to deploy. Um, and sort of the, this is like why, where this is a little hacky and that it'll fully deploy your code, wait for like, wait for it to be ready, healthy. So like you could go in the browser and then run the migrations. So then if the migrations fail, we'll roll back and it'll so, sort of do the same thing. So there is like a weird, this is where this probably isn't super production ready and that there's a weird period of the app being publicly available, um, but the release, the migrations aren't available yet. Um, whereas if you're running it on like Heroku with like the release tasks, it wouldn't, it wouldn't like redo the load balancers until it was like all fully deployed. Um, but that's pretty much how the, the GitHub action really is. It's, it's really just JavaScript running a bunch of uh, bash. If I really wanted to, I could have just written this all in bash and then um, just in the, like, this would be like a single liner of like exec deploy bash script. Um, I wanted to eventually be able to add tests to this. Uh, there are no tests yet, but um, so I decided to write it in JavaScript and then here you just call run here at the end. So that's sort of what the action looks like. That's, that's sort of what the gotchas are of, this, of, of how it currently is. Um, and that's all I've really got. Um, this are, these are the different ways you can uh, contact me uh, if you want to talk about this. Uh, and I guess if you have any questions, now is the time to, to shoot. First, we, we need applause since we're missing that. Clap, 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 oh. clap, clap, clap. It might be hard now that it's uh, dark in, in here. I didn't realize how dark it is, but uh, you can see my, my biggest fan is behind me. <laughs> this is 